Hello and welcome everyone. This is the course overview lecture where I just describe what you're going to get from this course and why it will be useful to you. So a little about me. I'm the best-selling author in kernel development fields. Okay, I have the best-selling courses for kernel-related content uh, on the internet. I hold a master's degree in advanced computer science. I'm director of a programming academy uh, called Dragon's App where we help teach uh, people all around the world uh, computer programming. I have over 15 years of programming experience and I'm the creator of three compilers and one assembler. So the fact that I've created three compilers, I am definitely the right person to be teaching you how to create a compiler. So let's explain the project. So in this course, we're going to create a C compiler that can compile majority of the C programming language. So all major functionality is supported. So some of the things that our compiler will compile are structures, unions, every single C statement is included. So we have for loops, if statements, else if, switch, go to, while, do while, and so on. Uh, all bitwise operators are supported. So bitwise and, bitwise XOR, and so on. All logical operators are supported. Okay, all numerical operators are supported, so multiply, plus, minus, divide, all of that is supported in our compiler. Uh, C functions are supported, C pointers are supported, so we have uh, structure pointers, union pointers, primitive pointers. Uh, arrays are supported, uh, function calls are supported, and the macro system and preprocessor are supported. So we basically support 95% of the language. So majority of the C programming language can be compiled with our C compiler, okay? Uh, so in module one, we're going to create a lexer that is responsible for taking a C source file that we want to compile, and it converts it into a bunch of tokens. And then we have those tokens to put through a parser to produce an abstract syntax tree. So this is what we cover in module one, okay? An abstract syntax tree is essentially this. Okay, so we have uh, our source input here. It goes through our compiler, gets converted to a bunch of tokens. Those tokens go through a parser to produce a tree like this. So we can see after, after this simple program has been passed, our compiler will see a function node that has a main function name. It has a body node, which is everything between these uh, brackets. It has a vector of arguments, okay, which are the function arguments. And in our body node, we can see we have a variable node, which is equal to a number node. Okay, so this is, this is what parsing is. It takes a complicated input and it breaks it down into a tree that we can just follow. Okay, a bit like a linked list, if you will, uh, apart from uh, you can have many different types of nodes. Okay, so in module two, this is where the fun really begins. We actually start creating programs that work and we can run them. Okay, so we create a resolver, which is uh, responsible for taking an expression such as this, for example, a dot b dot c pointer axis e equals 50. And it will essentially break down that expression into a bunch of rules that the code generator can follow. And these rules tell the code generator exactly the type of code it needs to generate and exactly what it needs to do to be able to find the address in memory of a dot b dot c pointer axis e. Okay, so the resolver is very important. It helps break down uh, a difficult problem that our code generator would otherwise have to deal with itself. Okay, so by creating a resolver and this sort of abstraction, we take away the difficulty from the code generator and move it into a different part of our compiler, which makes it much easier uh, for us to write clean code. So our code generator will take in the abstract syntax tree we created, which I showed you here, and it will essentially go through there and it will generate a bunch of assembly language and stack frames and, and so on. Uh, and it will create assembly language output. Okay. And then we can take that assembly language output and create an executable binary that we can actually run. Now don't worry if you don't know these, these terms that I'm talking about. This is just the course overview. Every single thing I talk about here will be taught to you. 
okay so our code generator will support source files that cover all major functions of the c programming language okay so we'll be able to call printf we'll be able to do pretty much everything that c compilers can do already so our c compiler pretty much covers majority of the c programming language it'll pretty much be able to compile most files you, you throw at it so our code generator will support source files that cover all major functions of the c programming language including the ability to call C standard library functions, such as printf. So in module three, we create a semantic validator that ensures we aren't going to do anything illegal, okay? So for example, we don't want to set variables that don't exist. If you try to set A to 50 in, in a GCC compiler, right? It's going to say variable A does not exist. In module three, we, we make those rules. So when the programmer makes mistakes, we tell them you can't do this, you're setting a variable that doesn't exist, okay? So that's very important because the alternative is that our C compiler crashes, okay? And obviously we want to provide some feedback to the user, so semantic validation is very important. So also in module three, we create a preprocessor macro system. So this is where we really make the include, the if, def, and the define, and all the other C macros work, okay? Include in size of, by the way. All of that is done in the preprocessor. So now I'm going to show you some example programs that will work in our compiler once you finish this course. So we can see we have a simple book program here. We include stdio, stdlib, and uh, we define an array for the name that's equal to 20. Okay, so it holds 20 bytes for the book name. And we basically say how many books do you want to process? They enter a number of how many books. We create memory for those books and we basically load those books into memory and then print it back to them. Okay, so yeah, that is a very simple program, but you can see just how much your C compiler will be able to do already. You can see that it works with pointers, it works with primitive types, it works with structures. As, as you can see, majority of the C programming language is working in our compiler. Okay, here's another example program. We can see we include stio.h tells you if you've entered a negative number, tells you if you've entered zero, or if you've entered a positive number. So this is an example to show you that signed numbers work in our compiler. Uh, here's an example of the macro system working in our compiler. So we can see we define a macro function, ABC sum. It accepts X and Y, and it just adds them together. Okay, so now what we say, if 5 plus 10 is 15, then create integer x equals 50 as a variable in the global scope. Otherwise, create integer x equals 20. So obviously you can see this will return uh, 50 because it will generate this, this variable declaration here. So this is proof that uh, even the macro system is fully supported in our compiler. Okay, and uh, we can't forget about being crazy with pointers and casting them in weird ways. Obviously, I have to show that this works. We can cast a type into a pointer and then access the value of that pointer, all from, all from C. Okay, so our compiler is very powerful. It can compile complex programs like this, get the address of X, cast to integer uh, pointer, grab the value. Okay, so this is definitely the course for you if you want to learn compiler development. This course took two years to build. And I very much hope you will love every module. Thanks for watching.